We Americans are always looking for the newest home improvement ideas under the sun. And these days, we're also looking for ways to do something for the environment, which makes the idea of a two-for-one particularly appealing. Our cover story is reported now by David Pogue of the New York Times. You want to know the number one source of those greenhouse gases that leads to global warming? I'll give you a hint. It's not cars. It's buildings. That's right. All those office buildings, schools, and homes produce about half of all that glacier-melting pollution. But the 20 houses in this town don't produce any pollution at all. They're this year's entries in the Solar Decathlon, a competition for colleges that's run by the U.S. Department of Energy. The goal here is to demonstrate just what's possible uh, in terms of solar energy. Samuel Bodman is the U.S. Secretary of Energy. These homes, when you look at them, they're not sort of hippie, not something that's sort of uh, out of the mainstream. These are homes that are quite attractive, places to live. We're just so, trying to figure out what signal this takes. Huh? Yeah. For the 20 American and European colleges that made the finals, designing and building the solar dream houses was only half the challenge. The other half was getting them to Washington, D.C. There's been a, a lot of classes missed, to say the least. We've sacrificed just about every aspect of our lives. Good <laughs> grades, uh, social life, sleep. So when's the last time you had eight hours of solid sleep? <laughs> uh, it was about three months ago. <laughs> yeah. We're down to the wire, you know, but it's going very well. Finally, ready or not, the houses were opened to the public. On weekends, the lines were an hour long. Um, these hot and cold thermal storage tanks are charged like batteries. And then the judging began. So what kind of um, fluorescent lamps did, do you have? Is it um, T5? Very standard T8. T8s, yep. okay. And they're dimmable? We are here proving that solar energy does work. Richard King is the director of the Solar Decathlon. The Decathlon gets its name from 10 contests that totally encompass how you would measure and uh, judge a house. They have to do tasks, cook dinners, wash dishes, keep TV sets going for six hours a day, heat and cool their house between 70 and 78 degrees. And the sun has to power everything, heating, cooling, cooking, even charging an electric cart. As you'd expect, solar panels are a major architectural feature. Now, one reason solar homes haven't caught on yet may be the perception that they're boxy and ugly. You know you've made it when you can afford to move into a shipping container. But solar homes don't have to be homely. In fact, some of these houses are gorgeous. Turns out you don't have to sacrifice luxury when you go solar either. These houses have all the modern comforts. Mood lighting. Outdoor showers. I mean, if it's hooked up. And sub-zero refrigerators. A lot of technical breakthroughs are on display here, but not all of it is easy to explain in simple terms. We have an evacuated tube solar water heater. Excuse me? The magnet creates an inductive magnetic field. Concentric cylinders, uh, air has been sucked out in between them. That's basically a hydroponic system. That field causes the atoms and ferrous metals to vibrate. With the intent of having potable water at the end of the system. But some of the new ideas are easy to grasp, like this indoor waterfall demonstrated here by Nick Venezia from the University of Maryland team. The moisture comes from the air and it goes down through the bottom of the wall, up through the wall, and the finished product gets sent out by this fan system. Oh, see, so I understand this perfectly. So basically what's happening, you're running water in here to add moisture to the air in the house. No, actually, it's the reverse. Oh, okay, so it's taking moisture out of the air. Because it's not just water, it's a calcium chloride and water solution. It's the calcium chloride that makes this waterfall unusual. It absorbs moisture from the air. And the advantage of taking moisture out of the air is? Well, about 30% of your cooling loads during the summer can be attributed to the moisture in the house. So it's, it's uh, taking the burden away from your air conditioning system. So less humidity means less heat, which means running your air conditioner less, which means you use less energy. Well, we have a translucent roof, one of the big architectural features of this house. Jason Brown gave us a tour of Georgia Tech's high-tech house of light. Hot water in these houses comes from these special tube systems, which can heat water as high as 200 degrees. It takes the sun's energy as heat, and transfers it into the water in the, in the hot water tank. With a slight modification, it's like a normal hot water heater. 
Wow, yes, it, you, you can't tell unless you have like a, a really high definition TV, but it's, it's hot. This home was shipped all the way from Germany by the Technical Institute of Darmstadt. According to team leader Jörg Tuna, it's loaded with energy saving features. This is a very new development, it's a prototype, it's never been built like that before. On this house, some of the solar panels are hidden on the roof and the rest are in plain view. Wooden louvers with photovoltaics mounted on top of them. We are able to adjust the angle of the louvers according to the angle of the sun, so we always have a maximum amount of uh, gain with them. So you have to run around inside all day adjusting every... Of course not. We have a computer that does that for us. So oh! we have actually... There's a lot of cool stuff inside, too. So what we have right here is, is an oven that opens at the bottom. So all the heat just stays up in the oven and does not get lost. And you come down here and you sit and you stare at the mirror? Well, it's a mirror at the first glance, but if you press this little button right here, it turns on to be a TV, actually. Oh, dude, German engineering. Now, if you ask the Secretary of Energy, the U.S. is doing plenty to address the climate crisis. This president has always made the statement that this was an important matter. Uh, we've clearly learned a lot as time has gone on. But not everyone agrees that we've done enough. We don't have a renewable standard, which many countries have, that require that you get 10% or 20% of your energy from renewable sources. Greg Kiss has been designing solar buildings for 25 years. He's the chief architecture judge for the Solar Decathlon. Other countries, Germany, Japan, actually all of Europe these days, have implemented programs that have a very consistent policy. You know, either they pay you extra money for solar electricity that you generate, or they give you a tax break. In this country, the federal government has not been especially supportive on that level. As the competitors sit down together for a solar-cooked dinner, they're hopeful that they'll be able to do a better job. I think the, the later generations, uh, the ones that are up and coming now, are really grabbing onto the issues that are affecting our climate today. Finally, the scores from the 10 competition categories are tallied up. Welcome to the awards ceremony for the 2007 Solar Decathlon. After two years of effort and months of sleepless nights, the teams gather to hear the winners announced. The technology that we see on display here works. And I don't think I can pay it any higher compliment than that. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my great personal honor to present your 2007 Solar Decathlon Champions, the team that architects love and that you have been lining up to see all week, the Technical University of Darmstadt. So this time, the Germans took the trophy. But winning the Solar Decathlon doesn't exactly help these teams recoup the half million to one million dollars they've spent on these model houses. We give them a trophy, it's, there's no monetary value, but you know there is. I mean, it's the most famous house in America for a day. <laughs> but it's pretty obvious that these kids weren't in it for the money, or even the trophy. They've had their eye on a bigger prize all along.